Hey everybody, so the moon is in Cancer. The moon is in Cancer and it's dragging through the rest of my eighth house. Hopefully tomorrow I'll have a little more energy. I had a bunch of energy and then it just went ploop. So um, how are you guys doing? How are you guys doing? So tomorrow it's gonna be kind of interesting. It's gonna be actually a very interesting day because right now, as we're talking, the moon is square sun. The moon is square the sun. So, you know, people might be feeling a little bit of just internalized pressure. I think sometimes people are looking, I mean, sometimes astrology, we can be totally literal, like super literal textbook. And then sometimes it's a little more metaphorical, right? And so with the sun square the moon, there's a little bit of pressure. And I think we're all feeling a little angsty, you know, a little you know, what's going to happen next. There's a lot of uncertainty and that all makes us a little bit self-protective. So, um, it doesn't mean people are going to be at each other necessarily like here on the app, but we're, we're watching our safety right now. We're like, there's a lot going on and we know there's shenanigans and what's up next, you know? So that's that kind of energy that we're going into tonight, but tomorrow, tomorrow and it'll be like evening um because it'd be like 20 well 20 hours from now basically the moon will be squared jupiter that's usually kind of volatile energy because the jupiter's in aries so everything's kind of in a, a big lens because jupiter i know people say it's like the planet of of blessings and what have you and it can be it can be but it's actually a magnifier so it makes everything seem a little bit larger than it is sometimes um whether we're looking at our problems or we're looking at our bank accounts we're like i got plenty let's go shopping um right hey is that spencer spencer how's my guy spencer has been with me since the very beginning like since my very first live stream big hugs big loves um, do I have teacher's pets? Yes, I do. Spencer's one of those. But people, I, I remember people, you know, it's like you think we don't, but we do because we're regular people who came here and then the internet just happened. So, you know, yeah, I'm an expert astrologer, but I'm still a people's. Um, and I think that's one of the things I love most about TikTok is... It gave those of us who didn't really necessarily want a massive audience or want to be, you know, we wanted to connect with people. And it gave us that opportunity that just wasn't the same on other platforms. You know what I'm saying about? Mm. Anyway, so tomorrow, about 20 hours from now, the moon will be square Jupiter. That's kind of kaboomy energy because the moon's in cancer. We've got a lot of feels. People are up on deck. Just look at the comment sections and a lot of videos. Um, it's kind of like um, it's tinder dry. You know, it's getting ready to spark, spark the flames. So be ready for some contentious news. Thank you. And see, I got my nails done because I was doing finger hearts and I was like, the finger hearts don't work without nails, in my opinion. Just my opinion. But anyway, that's my Libra moon talking. It's just like, must have the nails. You can tell I'm tired. Um, when am I not tired? Remember, I'm a one woman show. I've got some help and it is invaluable. Jennifer is the person who sends out the links for the readings, you know, and helps me in some back end stuff. Um, but I deal with Patreon all by myself. So sometimes there's mess ups. Those are always embarrassing. If you want to, if you want to have any measure of success in life, though, here's some life life advice: you got to be willing to screw up in public and just go, <laughs> "Oops." <laughs> um, it was something I really had to learn because my South Node is in Virgo. So when I was younger, I would get violently ill if I made a mistake in public. So you, when I when I do that now, I know I have my North Node in Pisces and I just have to trust it It will work out. It will be okay. I, I get to keep my pulse going. It'll be fine. Um, so tomorrow's a little contentious. Tomorrow's a little contentious. So that's going on. Um, and it leads up to our first moon in Leo in opposition to Pluto in Aquarius. 
which no one's ever observed before, but we can give some good guesses. And so it might be very incendiary, you know, looking at France um, and other countries in Europe, looking at the United States, people organizing, and it did the thing. Didn't die. I'm okay. So, right? So you realized you joined the Discord during your... 11th house, nodal return. Oh my God, Spencer. So yeah. What planet is losing it? All of them, man. All of them are losing it. So yeah. So. Also, remember, I can't, I can't see your comments, but hang on a second. I'm, I'm looking. Your North Node is in Virgo. Well, for you, you're supposed to be... If your North Node is in Virgo, it's learning to be more exacting and and more, ref, more editive, okay? But not nitpicky, but just paying attention to details. Um, my, my North Node job is to let go and trust the process. <laughs> Yeah, I'm getting better at it. Now that I'm in my 50s, it's a lot easier. But when I was in my 20s, if I had a typo in a paper, I would hurl. Like literally a little teeny tiny typo, like not a massive one, but just like put the period wrong, hit comma instead of period. Yeah, something teeny, 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 tiny. And I'd be like, Bleh. so life changed. Life change. Learn to, learn to let go of some of that stuff. And honestly, if you're constantly producing content, you have to live with mistakes. That's all there is to it, especially if you don't have a team. You know, the, the people who have very polished work, they have teams and they have a budget. <laughs> Speaking of, um, you know who my team is, though? My patrons. My patrons are my team. And you guys have helped get the podcast over the top 5% of podcasts globally, we're now inching up. We, we've just kicked over the numbers to get us into the 3%. Um, and that's in any category. And that's remarkable. I, I do think the new mic is helping us retain listeners. I'm not using it right now. I'm using my phone. But my new XLR system. Oh, it is butter. It's butter, baby. Um, it makes me always want to talk soft. Because I hear the plate, you know, I, my mic's connected to the sound system and I can hear it. And I'm like, let's just make love to this mic, you know. Um, so I'm super excited about that. I have a very special guest that I'll be recording this Saturday for a series. And it'll probably end up being like a two-part or a three-part interview series. They're a spiritual teacher. And as um, I will announce it um, before I drop the episode. It's somebody... Um, here on TikTok, who I really, really admire. Yeah, the mods know. They, they get to submit some questions. But I'm super excited. So as soon as we get the interview in the can, we'll announce. And that will be, so next Monday, we'll have a very special episode. It'll probably be a two or three parter. Very, very excited. Very, very good spiritual teacher. Somebody I admire very much. So very excited to have them on. Um, the energy is a little wacky. I'm not going to lie. Um, not only, you know, one last week, it was a major series of astrological happenings. And remember when we have astrological happenings, whether it's an ingress, first of all, we had the equinox. Okay. Then we had the new moon. <laughs> then we had Pluto ingress into, um, uh, Aquarius. And if that wasn't enough, you know, just days later, we had Mars move into Cancer. And so it was one boom, boom, boom. And <laughs> it was a lot of energy. That energy is still ringing out. And now Mars and Saturn are in a trine. That's some pretty he heavy hitting energy. And pop astrologers always diminish the power of water. But have you ever been to the Grand Canyon? What formed that canyon? water have you been to the ocean have you ever gotten knocked off your feet by the surf water water is very powerful and it's not just emotions we act like emotions make us weak um emotions cause a lot of the problems you know pride pride is an emotion okay um fear 
is an emotion and it's a very powerful one and it drives a lot of bad decision making you know um look at how the politicians use fear to pit people against each other um even their excuse on the restrict you know we're going to take away your rights <laughs> um you know, because we're protecting you. And I talked about that on the podcast. So if you haven't listened to the Awake Space Astrology podcast, I talked a little bit about that because of the Mars and Cancer action. And I recorded that on Sunday night. And I talked about some things that loosely relate to yesterday's happenings, um, which is saddening. It's not like I called anything, but I was talking about the themes that would be up on deck with Mars trining off with Saturn. Um, in California, I think we can really, really expect that rain to continue to be significant over the next couple of days. Um, if you were privy to the 2023 Year Ahead seminar, I've got it linked up in my bio as well. It's on sale. I'm keeping it on sale right now. Um, I talked about the unsettling weather of March and early April um, globally. There's stuff all over the world. We don't always hear about the news in other countries. Um, I try to pay attention because I have a global audience. I've always had a global audience in whatever I've done because I'm an internationalist, which is different than a globalist. Um, but, you know, I left this country at 18 and I went to college in England and then I worked. And I didn't come from a rich family at all. I was a scholarship kid and I worked my ass off. Um, you know, my, my privilege was I have a really good brain and I wasn't afraid enough of things. I should have been, a, I learned to be more afraid of life. Let's put it that way. Um, and you say, oh, don't be afraid of life. No, I needed to have a little bit of fear because I, I did, I had some, though, I've had adventures. Let's put it that way um, and survive them. But I have friends and family all over the world. And so... To me, I see us as a human family. I don't, I, I think borders and some of the traditions, you know, some cultural traditions are beautiful. Some are just oppressive, you know. Um, some, like national identities, I, I think they're dumb. We're, we're a human family, okay? And we live on this floating rock in space and we have finite resources and I think that's one of the reasons, especially in America, travel is is discouraged. And it is discouraged, you know. Um, it, it's very expensive to get to leave here. And I don't know if you've heard the stories, but it's it's harder to get your passport done right now. And some of that is we've had a brain drain. We've had some very privileged people leave, you know. Um, I'm not going to leave at this stage. I will stay um and try to make things as good as i can make them however i can make them empowering people to run for office voting is not our only recourse when i say run for office i'm not talking about run for president i'm talking about run for your local school board get on your water board um you know the water con conservation or the public utilities district if you have one get on the town council get on the planning commission run for dog catcher we need you and I can show you astrologically why, you know, part of that is the Pluto and Aquarius era that we're getting a sneak peek of right now. Um, but astrology and politics go hand in hand. The oldest use of astrology was, was to look at the weather and events because that impacted the power base. It impacted the money. It impacted the people in power. Astrologers have always been political advisors and counselors. Um, and it used to be only the very wealthy could afford us. And so that's why I educate to help you guys understand you and the power you have. And, in, and it's so much more when you come together. That, these are the times we live in. Okay. I started life as a political analyst. Astrology rammed into me in 1995 and I was going to prove it wrong because I was a logical, rational person. I did not believe in superstitious mumbo jumbo. And it proved me wrong at every turn. It is data sets. I know it's not always talked about that way. I know I talk about astrology very, very differently than a lot of people. Um, but I purposely try to make it applicable to your life so you can use it. It's so important right now. Um, it's beyond nationalism at this point. 
there are those, when you look at the private equity companies, and I said they'd be in trouble this year, and they are, they are. When, because you're looking, the investment banks are the banks that are having trouble, not the retail banks, not where you and I put our money, but the investors are having problems. And we could all go, yay, and on one hand, but we're watching a billionaire battle. And I take it as no small thing that right after we have banking issues, you have the Restrict Act coming in. They're coming in at the same time, right? That was introduced on the 7th of March. While we have the ability to communicate, while we have the ability to interact, there are a couple of skills that you need in this Pluto in Aquarius era that is to come. Because again, we're getting a sneak peek. Remember, Pluto swings back into Capricorn. It's going to undo more structures and power bases. And it's going to do the cha-cha until the end of November of 2024. 2024 is a very volatile year. We will do a year ahead in June, Okay. There's a couple of things I'm going to do around the solstice, okay? Um, I did that in 2022 for 2023 as well because this year is also very volatile because we're in a time of massive systemic change. Change cannot happen overnight. Nobody could deal with it. Nobody would have the skills to manage it. You can't go from being oppressed into managing a new system without skill building. And we've all, unless you are part of the power brokers, we've all been oppressed and we all help oppress ourselves. And that's why I teach what I teach. That's why I don't just give you pop astrology answers. And I, I, I try to empower and uplift you because the more people who understand their value at a core level, the more you can self-actualize and allow your sun, your essence to shine into the world the more you're able to work with others, the less insecure we are, the less we need to one-up one another, the less we need to prove our worth, the more we know who we are, the more we're able to work with people in concert together. And people can't control people like that, okay? You can't control someone who knows their value. You can incarcerate them. You can try to put them down but if someone knows their worth and their value those circumstances do not diminish them okay and when we're self-actualized we are better able to collaborate with one another we end up having better listening skills we end up having better oh, i gotta see what was this poll have i listened to Lori's podcast a hundred percent what i got a hundred percent of my listeners what thank you um so you know, you know then, I'm preaching to my choir. But um, one of the things I see that disturbs me on a regular basis is people use astrology to um, say, oh, well, my life is always going to suck. Or I'm always going to be this. You know, to, you use it to oppress yourself instead of seeing that the energy expresses on a spectrum. Okay, the energy expresses on a spectrum. You might be expressing it here, and that's why things are sucky. But if you can just get it up, get it up a little bit, it doesn't even have to come up here. You can just tweak it a little. Then you, you have so much more agency. You have so much more agency. And, and it's understanding that, it, that you have the keys to the universe, Right? And you can unlock yours. And um, that's why I became a practicing astrologer. I'm an applied astrologer, meaning it's not just theory. It's not just, you know, lovely words. It's here's how you use your energy. And I will argue with you in a reading for yourself. And, and I will. I will. I, I do it all the time. I had a client in tonight and... Um, they were a very heady person. They were a very intellectual person, a very intelligent person, a very beautiful person. And I saw this position in their chart and I said, you need to doodle. And they were like, what? I'm like, you need to doodle. It doesn't have to be a great work of art. You need to doodle. You need to cartoon. You need to do something that makes you giggle and laugh. And they were like, what? I'm like, I'm going to argue for your joy. You need to do something freaking silly. You, you, you're up here and you've achieved these things, but you said you lost your curiosity. Come back, find your child, childish giggles, make fart jokes, 
do something. Open your heart space. So, we've all been trained. We have to do this one big thing. What's my purpose? Am I going to lead people? Am I going to write the great American novel? Am I going to write the best song in the world? Am I going to go viral on TikTok? Am I going to, you know, help liberate the masses? Liberate yourself first. Take care of you first. Find your joy because your joy is part of understanding your value. You can find your joy, you shine. And when you do that, you lift other people up around you and you attract other people around you and you learn to listen, right? You learn to listen. And if we can listen, we hear each other's heartbeats. And when we hear each other's heartbeats, we know each other are human. And when we understand we're human and that is a blessed thing to be, then we work together and we stop fighting and seeing our differences. And I'm not telling you to be colorblind and I'm not telling you to not recognize people's identities, but if you can hear someone's heartbeat, they're a human. And that is what we need right now. Pluto is in Aquarius. Aquarius is the sign of humanity. It is this, I don't know why the generation of astrologers above me decided it was aliens. It might well be aliens, but it rules Classically, it rules humanity. And we need to hear each other's heartbeats. Because they stop so easily. And yeah, by some pew pew violence, but also through lack of satisfaction, over compromising, self oppression, buying into the social narratives, buying into the idea that life has to be a certain way and you don't have any wiggle room, you have a hell of a lot more free will and agency than you think. Now there's often a cost. There's often a price. But who said it was expensive? Who said it was too much to pay? I've always been weird. The worst thing I ever did was try to fit in. That cost me more than the price I paid for being different. Because when you know who you are, when you can live authentically, when you know your chart and you don't use it as an excuse to oppress yourself, okay? And I see pop astrology, it's all over. And I'm sad to say it sometimes happens in my very own discord. Oh, well, I have this placement, so it's always going to be this way. No, 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 no. First of all, that just shows you don't understand enough about how those placements can express. You only know one side of it. What if it's a dodecahedron and it has 12 sides? What if you're only looking at one side of this 12-sided picture? Okay, there's so much more than you can imagine, but you have to open the mind and you don't need to take anything to open your mind, okay? That's why I teach, I reiteratively, I say stuff over and over and over and over, over again. Which can get annoying sometimes, but I'll do it as long as I have to do it. Because that's what I teach. I want you to lift yourself up. And when you do that, you lift others. People watch. People watch each other, right? That's why, and I'm one of those people who will just quietly do my work. I'll just do it and I forget to share and then I remember if I share, it gets other people excited. And so that's why I've been sharing how the podcast is doing. Like, holy crap, me and my mic and my computer and my software sit and record a podcast, sometimes with one of my astrologers, sometimes with a guest, sometimes just by myself. I do it in my living room. And we're above, we are way over the top 5% of podcasts globally. We are at 3%. And well on our way, we're edging. Um, our goal is to get into the top 1% globally, which would be so cool. It's not as big as a number as you think for listens. It's very attainable. It's like under 4,000 listens in seven days to a single episode. It's so doable. I had no idea how doable it was. Now, the difference between the very top 10 podcasts in that 1% and the bottom part of that 1%, it's a, it's a large gap. But I'm not trying to compete with Joe Rogan. I just, I'm competing with me. <laughs> and you guys are helping lift it up and elevate it. So, right? You've been listening. I love that. Thank you for listening. And yeah, and even if you aren't a patron, 
that's cool. Thank you for listening because listening lifts us up. Now, what I'm proud about and why I'm thanking the patrons is because their support is what makes the podcast happen. I don't have to go for sponsorships. I don't have to like put ads in it. I'll do some other podcasts that might have ads, but for right now, you know, this podcast will always stay patron sponsored and I feel a little bit like NPR and that makes me feel kind of cool. I'm not going to lie. I'll be like, that's why I use my NPR voice. But yeah, you just, I can't even see. Hang on. You feel lost and don't know what purpose. What does found feel like? Like, why would you focus on being lost? You know what you do if you get lost in the forest? Hug a tree. Until you get found. What does found feel like? Nobody has a giant purpose. Your purpose is to have a range of experiences. This idea that that, that is a media hype thing. The chosen one, the chosen one who will liberate the land, the chosen one who will liberate the people, the chosen, the writer, the artist, the director. What if you're just here for the ride? Why isn't that okay too? When you can find the things that bring you joy or bring you a giggle or at least satisfy you in some way, you're in your purpose. Okay, we're not, the, the oppression comes from thinking everything has to be a song. Everything has to win a Grammy or an Emmy. You know, there's a lot of good films who've never won an Oscar. There's a lot of great music that never got a Grammy or a Tony. There's a lot of good TV that never, and actors who never got Emmys. There's a lot of great technicians who've never been awarded. A lot of great writers never won Pulitzers or Hugo Awards or Nebulas. It's not about that. If you're lost, then ask yourself, what would it be like to be found? What would it be like to be found? What, what, what would the feeling of found be? I hear I'm lost all the time. I'm lost. I don't know what to do. Well, here's what I learned. I grew up in the Pacific Northwest, hunting and fishing in the forest and in the by the river, in a van down by the river. But no, we didn't have a van. Um, that's an SNL joke, probably dating myself. Um, but if we felt lost, because sometimes you could be walking and you don't know your direction, but you don't feel lost, right? But if you felt lost, you hugged a tree, you stayed put. Or you follow the water downstream. You follow the water downstream because eventually you'll find people. And downstream is the easier way to go, isn't it? You go downstream. You work with the current instead of going against it. One year I was changing my direction because I blew my life up. Okay, on purpose. I knew 2020 was coming and I needed to make major life changes. You know what I did? I stared at clouds for six months. I lived with my best friend, Kirsten Joyful Life. She's here. I stayed at her house. And for six months, I stared at clouds every morning. I didn't stare at them to see the pictures in them or the symbols in them. I did it as a focus, a mental focus. I thought about nothing but the cloud. And I didn't even think about it. I didn't think about what shape it was, what it might be, what it could represent. I just focused my eyes on the clouds because I was switching a mental habit of 16 years. It looked crazy. I was with the very best possible person for that. She'd go, what you thinking about? I'm like, nothing. What you doing? Looking at clouds. Oh, okay. Every morning. And then I'd come in and I, we'd go about our day. Every morning, staring at clouds. Did I know what direction I was going to go? Not really. I just knew I needed to change and I knew it would work itself out. Now, I don't suggest that for everybody because it takes a lot of years of metaphysical practice to be able to do something like that. 
um, I still, even with all the metaphysical practice, was still letting go of old social conditioning because we're human. We're in human bodies. We have human brains. We have human experiences. I don't care how much you've studied and read books and taken workshops and how many certificates you have on your wall. You're human. And there's always going to be a little something. We're not here to be paragons of anything except the human experience, which can be gritty and messy. But it can be beautifully gritty and messy, too. We can make beautiful messes and clean them up and make another mess and clean it up. Right? The moon is in Cancer right now. It is square at the sun. We are all feeling a little uncertain. I can guarantee you, you could set a path. You could write the perfect plan right now. You could go to chat GPT and ask it to write you a life plan. And it wouldn't work in two and a half more months because we'll see another range of change. And then you go, what did I do wrong? I had the perfect plan. You had the perfect plan from the moment you wrote it. But every single moment is a new moment. If you want to make plans, you'd be like, how, do, how does security feel inside of me? How do I know when I'm secure? Is it a numbers game? Or, or is it a sense and an understanding? You might be like, I don't know enough. But do you know how to know more? Do you know how to learn more? Then you have a tool. You might not have enough in this moment, but you know it'll be okay eventually. There you go, right? I've been there, right? We can only plan with what we've got, when we've got it, for the moment we're in. And the reality we can foresee ahead from the moment we're in with the perspective we have. But as we grow and change and evolve, Things change. The future is not written in stone. The future is my job, guys. This is what I do. I make predictions and I'm very accurate. I have a very good accuracy rating. Okay. No one predicts at 100%. Okay. <clears throat> you get above 50 50 on your predictions, you're doing really well. The minute you get to 51%, you're doing pretty good. You're, doing, you're above the average, right? Because average, the average is 50 50, right? You get to 51%, you're above the average. You get to 60%, you're well above the average. You get to 80% or higher, and that's about where I run. You're doing really good, but that takes a lot of practice, right? But you have to understand you're looking at all the possibilities and all the probabilities. There's always more possibilities than there are probabilities. In the fan of potential, it's like a tree with many branches and there'd be many more than these fingers. And then we have probability and it might go down to like, it'll look kind of squinky, right? Make it like this. I'm trying not to flip anybody off, but it weaves. How do we choose? Every morning you have the ability to choose how you want your day to go. And you might have to tweak it and tune it a little bit. You notice when you wake up in a sour mood? When I do that, I actually lay back. If I wake up with grumpy thoughts, and I can't, I'm a Cancerian. Trust me, grumpy can be a default setting for us sometimes. If I wake up and I'm like groggy, I'm like, oh God, I had to wake up. That's not a good way to start my day. My whole day is going to be off if I do that. So instead, I lay back, I close my eyes, and I start thinking a nicer thought. Like, gosh, my bed is comfy. I feel really cozy right now. I wonder if the sky is blue and I turn my head and I look out my window and I, I can see through the blinds. I'm like, oh look, there's a blue sky. I wonder if I can hear a bird. Ooh, I can hear a bird singing. I like birds. And then I think, oh, I wonder if the flowers are blooming in the hills. That would be pretty to see. I could go to that other coffee place notice how I'm thinking instead of oh god I have to get up I'm so tired I worked all night I didn't get the podcast published till 2 30 I didn't get the horoscopes out till 4 
right? A lot of times people wonder, what does this have to do with astrology? It has everything. When I'm telling these stories, including on the podcast, it goes with the astrology I'm talking about. Everything is astrology. If you have a conversation with me, I hear the astrology of you speaking to me. It's almost like I see little symbols coming at me. Oh, there's their Mercury, there's their Saturn, there's their Venus. I wonder if this is. Mm -hmm. Everything. Astrology reflects everything in life. It's symbolic. It's reflective. And we have different ways of expressing energy. Saturn can be restrictive at one end but it can be exactly the structure you need to have an expansion on the other. It can be authoritarian or it can be the discipline to reach an ambition. And sometimes there's a fine line in between those things, right? But understanding the subtlety of how energy expresses is what can make you um, kind of go to the next level as a person. You don't even have to be an astrologer, right? You can do it for your own enrichment. Just to have that self-knowledge, to be self-determinant, to be self-actualizing. You know, self-determination is a human right. It is a human right to be self-determining. And that is what I like to facilitate. I want to facilitate not my beliefs being shown in you, but I want to facilitate you understanding your value so you can determine your beliefs. So you can determine your truth. So you can self-express and self-determine. I don't have to like how anybody expresses. Or I don't have to approve of it or condone it and be like, give you my seal of approval. You already have it. Because my big question will be, are you at least satisfied with life? If you're satisfied... And I don't mean that as a compromise, like, well, I'm satisfied. No, like, are you satisfied? You know, when you feel satisfied after a meal, it was a really good meal, and you're sated. You're satisfied. Are you savoring things in your life? Are you savoring being yourself? Now, if you're like, no, I really hate myself, and I had all this stuff happen, and I'm just going to tell you right now, that will not help you get anywhere in life. And it certainly won't make your life have a better quality. And I've been there too. Again, I'm a cancer. We can wallow with the best of them. I have a cancer mercury on top of it. I can wallow with the best of them. When I was a kid, I would intentionally make myself sad to cry. I used to drive my mother nuts. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I needed to feel sad. And she's like, why? I'm like, because sometimes it feels good to feel sad. Right? Right? No, oh, I began your journey into astrology. I love that. And self-actualizing. Oh, I love that. I love that. Big hugs. Thank you. Oh, big hugs. Yeah. I love that. I love that. Because if I, if, if you know, we, we all are born and we all die. Those are two facts of life. We are born and we all die. What we do in between is living. And if I get to the end of my life and I know that people know themselves deeper because of catching a podcast or reading a book or taking a class or getting a reading with me or one of the astrologers I've trained. Um, if I know that you've made your corner of the world just that much brighter, that you've been gentler and kinder to yourself, I will have considered my life a well-lived life and I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. But I can think of no greater service than to help people become an unfolding evolutionary version of themselves because you never reach your full potential. If you were to reach your full potential, you would experience entropy. There is no place from perfect other than devolution. So you don't want to be perfect. 
because the only way to go from perfect is down. It is a constant unfolding. In Buddhism, they talk about the 10,000 petal lotus. And, you know, a lotus would start opening, you know, and unfolding and unfolding. And it gets more and more and more and more. And it doesn't happen in an instant. It happens over time. Be gentle on yourselves. These false expectations and false narratives that were put on us as children are not useful. They're, and, and it's not because parents wanted to control, you know, even if you had controlling parents, look, they were following the social program. And sometimes it's a divine betrayal. And I can go into that another time or in a class or something because it's hard to explain and I don't want to do it on a live stream. We are in extraordinary times where we need everyone to find a little bit of extraordinary self. And it doesn't mean extraordinary self isn't about being a superhero in a flex kind of way. Not that kind of flex. But it's understanding that your voice matters. You can make a phone call. You can write a letter. You can reach out to someone and say, how can I support you? That's a very beautiful question. Can you imagine? How can I support you? Instead of saying, oh, you'll be fine. Oh, it'll be okay. How can I support you? That's a beautiful big question. And then listen, what does somebody need? Strength-based facilitation. What have we already got? What do we have right now that can address this need someone might have? What do we already have? Instead of, oh man, we don't have enough money or times are hard, the economy, inflation, blah, blah, blah. What do we already have at our disposal right now? Because interest rates will keep rising because the Fed does this, okay? The housing market is going to be all over the place. Commercial banking is going to be all over the place. These are all things. Oh my God, thank you. Thank you so much. We all have something to contribute in the process. Some of you could run for office, some for you. Some of you could support people running for office. Yes, they're trying to limit our free speech. Less, yes, they're trying to limit. They've been afraid of the internet for a very long time. And it was designed to bring people together. It was never designed to tear people apart. I got to see the internet in 1988. I was 19. Dr. B. Ray Horn was a professor at our university. He owned a satellite company. He didn't even need to be a professor. I wasn't one of his students. He taught engineering. I was an international relations major minoring in cultural anthropology. Cultural anthropology. And he and I would sit in the coffee shop drinking coffee and talking about the world. And he was really encouraging. And I was like, why do you teach when you don't have to? And he's like, young people keep me vibrant. And he was older, he was in his 60s at the time. And he was like, young people keep me vibrant. They keep my mind working. They always have fresh ideas and fresh perspectives. And I was like, that's cool. And the coolest old people I knew when I was young were the people who hung out with young people that weren't creepy. They weren't the creepy old people, but they were the people who were like enthusiastic and supportive of youth. They were the good mentors. And, um, and they taught me, and that's why I love to mentor young people. Anyway, he invited a bunch of us to his house, and it was like six engineering students, five business students, and me, a dozen young people. And I was like, okay, I was the only humanities student there. Okay. And we walk in and he's got this metal case and it was really huge, huge, huge. And he brought it out and he pulled it out and it had a, a orange and silver screen. It was a $10,000 compact laptop, but it laptop. <laughs> it's 1988. Grabbed a big box, plugged a telephone wire into it and made the most un godly noise I'd ever heard in my life. I have really sensitive ears. And I was like, what is this screeching sound? Never heard a modem before, right? And the engineering students were all over that laptop and that connection and trying to figure it out. And the business students were wondering why we were there. I was wondering why I was there. And then, and then 
he got it on and we saw a bulletin board service, okay? And all the business students wanted to make money. But how, did, how do they monetize this? And I'm still standing back wondering, why the hell am I there? And this bulletin board service had a guy in DC, Washington DC, talking to a guy in Moscow and another guy in Beijing. This was 1988. The wall had not fallen. These three countries were not talking to each other diplomatically at the time. There was some tensions. And there I was, the international relations major, and they were talking about their favorite beer. And I said, Dr. Horn, is this in real time? He said, yeah. I said, they're talking the roaming question. He said, yeah. I was like, oh my God, that guy really is in DC? And he's like, yeah. That other guy's in Beijing? Yeah. That other guy's in Moscow? Yeah. It was inconceivable in 1988 that this would happen in real time. I was like, oh my gosh, we can change the world. And that's what the internet was designed to do, guys. That's Pluto in Aquarius. And we're going to see people evolving the internet forward while people push against and try to regulate it. That's the Pluto in Aquarius energy is to set it, to set it. It was designed to bring us together. And we can allow division and we can allow authoritarianism to divide or we can learn to listen to one another and talk about our favorite beer, talk about our favorite coffee, Talk about those silly things those kids do, right? Talk about how much we love our favorite recipes. In a nostalgic move, because I'm a cancer and the moon's been in cancer, I was looking at a lot of the people um, I fought, first followed on TikTok when I got here. I came here in protest. I didn't come here to build an audience. I came here to protest a president wanting to ban or force the sale of an app. It was an overreach. And when I got on here, I saw all these wonderful creative people. Some of them more polished than others. I was fascinated by all the cosplayers and all the makeup, you know, fancy makeup, holy cow, talent, but the bread bakers. And the people just offering comfort. People taking time to play a little bit of music. People answering questions. People supporting other people. And I was so impressed. I was like, wow, it's regular people being creative. This is somewhere I can dig to be. Because I hated the FB. Well, and Instagram is boring. And YouTube is kind of stiff. Even when I make videos for YouTube, it's stiff. But here, maybe because we hold our phones up to our faces, we're a little more personal. And that is the most dangerous thing in the world, when people can look each other in the eye and see their humanity and recognize we are human. We all cry. We all bleed when we're cut. We all laugh in some way. Some of us have ridiculous snort laughs. When we listen, we can hear each other's heartbeats. When we're listening, we can hear each other's heartbeats. We take away the dehumanization of labels and we can see and hear the humanity in one another. Now, is everybody on this app doing that? No, because not all human beings do that. But all the people I was attracted to, whether they have big followings or not, because I have some very small creators that I follow and encourage, and I enjoy their updates. I feel like I'm part of their life too. And I'm like, how's that situation going? Let's check in, right? Pluto in Aquarius is going to be a 21-year run once it's fully ingressed. Remember, we're getting a slice of it. 
where we restructure society. And we can blame society all we want. Isn't that convenient? Except each one of us is society in a microcosm. Each one of us represents part of society. And when we listen to one another, we can hear each other's heartbeats. And we know we are human. And we are not here to dominate the planet. We are the children of this planet. We are not here to go to some other dimension or other plane of existence. We are here to be here. We are one of many organisms that are of this planet. We are here to be here. And when we listen to each other, we can hear each other's heartbeats. We are here to be here. We are the children of Gaia. Your soul of maybe has expressed itself in different ways, in different existences, but it's in a physical body as a human on this planet now. We are not here to dominate. We are here to live in concert. Every living thing, it interrelates everything from the water to the air to the land, the trees, the flowers, the animals, you. We all are made of the same stuff as the stars. Each one of us are made of stardust and we all interconnect. And when we listen, we can hear each other's heartbeats. That's Pluto in Aquarius at its highest level. It isn't about unity. It is about recognizing the reality of you in me and the reality of me in you. And in that there is difference. We are made of the same stuff, but we are organized to have a little different experience. And it is that difference that makes things interesting. Right? And when we listen, we hear each other's heartbeats. We are not the labels. We need to listen. And one of the most important things we can understand is sometimes people are out of step. Some people want to oppress. Some people, that, and maybe that's their experience in this lifetime. Maybe that's the role they play to cause the crisis, to force the collective act. Because in, in the form of metaphysics I follow, humanity is governed by ray four. Ray four is harmony through conflict. We need a crisis sometimes to grow. Just part of our design. And so sometimes those people we would most revile are performing a service. We may not understand it. Exactly. You don't have rainbows without the rain. Exactly. You need some storms to cause it. And you wouldn't have the Grand Canyon if a whole lot of water hadn't eroded it, right? Some of the most beautiful things in the world were caused by crisis. Now, I'm not saying your trauma was necessary. That's a different story entirely. Okay. So sometimes we're the victims of bad circumstances, but how we navigate those makes us who we are. The circumstance itself does not. Just so we're understood because I'm very passionate about that. You didn't need bad things to happen to you. But we collectively, because as a collective, we don't use our free will quite, em quite enough. Hopefully in 100 years or 200 years, maybe we will. But right now we're still working on gathering up our understanding of our own, right? And our own interconnectedness with nature. Everything has an astrology chart. This phone has an astrology chart. I just don't know what time, on what day, at one place, this phone came off the assembly line fully put together with a battery the first time it was turned on. I don't know. I know the day I bought it. But that wouldn't make its chart. Right. But everything has a chart. 
because we are all made of the same components at the quantum level. We are organized differently in the physical reality. And when you listen to each other, you can hear each other's heartbeats. It's going to be contentious. But if we can listen to one another and work in concert, and we've seen, this is one of the things I love about this app. That's why they don't like it. It's not just about this app. I mean, they're going after the internet because, you know, they're not going after Musk right now. He took money from the Saudis and the Saudis allied with Iran. But he's took, taken a wrecking ball to Twitter, which was a very big source of organizing for people around the world. And that's why they're going after the internet here. And I think it will be stopped. I, I have to go look at when the Restrict Act was introduced. I know it was March 7th, which, interesting enough, was when Saturn went into Pisces. Which is pretty damn good because, um, and I have to check, I have to check, was it put in before it swung in? They're going after the internet, but the internet is very difficult to take down. There's no kill switch. Okay. So they'd have to take down corporations. So again, I told you, we're watching a billionaire's war. Where's the money? How, how is the money fighting? And that's why Saudi gave Elon Musk a lot of money to <clears throat> demolish Twitter. Again, they jail people for tweets. I talked a little bit about that on my podcast. If you go listen to episode 14, I'd appreciate it, actually, because we're heading towards the top 1% of podcasts, which I'm so excited. It still won't put me, like, in the Joe Rogan category because, like, he gets millions of download listens. I just need to reach 4,000 in seven days in one episode that's it that puts me in the top one percent and then the gap between me and joe rogan is millions of listens but i'm okay being in the top one percent you never know we might get millions of listens someday i'm a, i'm all for the plucky little underdog Ta-da. that's why i wear my hoodies <laughs> my ratty hoodies then you can see Yes, I can dress up and look pretty, but I'm a cancer and I like to be comfy and this is my ratty hoodie. I'm not wearing my holy sweatpants though. I almost did today. I was about to leave the house and I was like, oh, these have holes in them. We should put on at least sweatpants that don't have holes. But cancers are like that. We like to be cozy. Okay. The app has been a gift. Yeah, it has brought about a lot of beautiful change. Absolutely. Cancer here, you get it, right? You've got that pair of sweats that you know should be in the rag bin, but you wear them. And you're like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then you're like, I can't do it. I can't. Right? Right? Moon's in Cancer right now. Moon's in Cancer through the 30th. And then it moves into Leo into a direct opposition with Pluto. And I'm really curious to see how this is going to manifest. It's probably big bada boom. But tomorrow will be interesting as well. So all of you guys with the cancer placements, I'm just going to let you know. Tomorrow might be a little interesting. There might be a little stress. Um, don't expect it. Just don't be surprised if you see it because the moon's going to be moving into a square with Jupiter. And uh, let's see, I've been on for about an hour or so. Moon's at like nine degrees now. So 18 hours from now, the moon will move into a square with Jupiter. So it just might be just like pressure. You might just feel pressure. It depends on where Jupiter is transiting your chart. If you're a patron... You can watch the chart walk through and it'll show you how to notice where things are in your chart. Ah, well, if, if you're calling it a yogi moon, that would probably be more like a Vedic astrology, which I don't do because I don't appropriate 
<clears throat> and I'm not fond of exaltations and detriments because I consider it a very patriarchal point of view. But it is pretty awesome to have the moon in Cancer. Can I post this live? I think this is a good live. I like this live. I will get it up in Patreon. Thank you. And when we listen, we hear each other's heartbeats, right? Oh, I'm glad. Thank you for listening to the podcast. That really helps us. And just huge thanks to the patrons. Without them, there is no me. And I love that the podcast is sponsored by the patrons. It makes it so much more special, don't you think? Don't you think it's so much cooler that people from all over the place, like we have patrons from all over the world. We have listeners from all over the world. I talked about that in the podcast. Do you know that my podcast is number two in Tanzania? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Tanzania. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Number two. It's number 20 in, um, number 27 in Azerbaijan. I'll take that. I'll take those numbers. Azerbaijan is a cool place. It has a cool name. Have I ever been there? No. No. But I think it's a cool name. Tanzania? No. Have I been there? No. No. No, I have not. I got to the Seychelles. I didn't get to Tanzania or Tanzania. Sorry, I always say it wrong. Um, but we're number two in the religion and spirituality podcast. There. That counts. That's cool. I'll take it. You know what? They listen to us in Serbo Croatia or Serbia. They listen to us in Croatia. They listen to us in Moldova and Trinidad and Tobago. What? Bolivia, Ecuador, are you kidding? 68 countries we get listened to in. I feel pretty fly about that. I don't care if it's one person listening in that country. I'm like, you're listening. Thank you. Can you tell I have a ninth house sun in Mercury? When I was a little girl, um, I was a voracious reader. I started reading at like two and a half, right? And I was like maybe three, four, and I found the book, Come Over to My House, Come Over to Play. Have, did you ever read that book? It was a Dandelion Press book. Come Over to My House, Come Over to Play. And there were little boys and girls from all over the world with their traditional housing and their costumes. And I wanted to go to every single one's house and meet them and play. Every single one. And that's why I traveled so much when I was in my 20s. And I wouldn't come back to the States, but I kind of had to, to retain custody of my kids. But yeah. The feel people all over the world are coming together. Yeah. Learning of our humanity. <clears throat> That's why in, you know, in, in, in authoritarian regimes, they talk about that other one. Oh, the West is doing this, or the East is doing this, or the Russians, or the... And I don't know if you guys always remember, um, if you guys remember a protest song Sting did in the 1980s, and it was the Russians. I hope the Russians love their children, too. And that was, you know, and by the way, there was a lot of great protest music in the 80s. Don't think we weren't fighting. We were... Of course, people love their children when they have a choice, when they're not forced, when they're not made to be broods, you know, brood mares, when they have options. You can't expect somebody to love something it was forced to conceive. It, it, a child would be lucky to have that. You know. When we listen to each other, we can hear each other's heartbeats. Remember that over the next couple of days. It's really important. We've got a big full moon coming up um, on April 5th, 6th. It depends. If you're on the West Coast, it'll be April 5th. If you're on the East Coast, it'll be April 6th, early morning. <clears throat> and it's in Libra. And when I look at the chart cast for where I'm at, what I see is the... What I see... 
is a social movement. The moon is halfway through the sign. And of course, so is the sun at that point because it's a full moon and the sun is shining its rain is on the moon and that's what makes a full moon a full moon. And I think in the chart for here, it's an 11th house moon and that rules the internet. I think we'll see people galvanizing. We got a bunch of Gen Xers. But um, we'll be looking at what's fair. We'll be expecting what's fair. We will move for what is fair. It's easy to be tired. Anybody can be tired. It takes something to get up when you're tired and do it anyway. Gen X knows all about that. Just keep doing the do. Right? It's a big full moon. I'll be doing a full moon um, ceremony on um, the, the April 2nd. And what I do on those nights um, is I give an overview of what I see coming for that full moon. Mundane-wise, politically, weather, all of that. And then I answer questions. Well, I go through the personal, like, what's it going to do if it goes through X house, Y house, Z house, right? In your chart. And then we turn off the recording. I answer your questions so that you can ask personal questions. And then we do another recording, a separate file of the meditation, which is channeled. Okay, so that's not astrology. That's me channeling because I'm a metaphysician. I'm an astrologer, yes, but I am also a metaphysician. I channel. I'm an energy worker. And so those are, you know, as I have my astrologers studying with the medium right now because you need to study a lot of things to be a good astrologer. Energy work is one of those, including learning the difference between your analysis brain, your, your analytical brain, and your intuitive brain and your intuitive body and being able to hold boundaries in a reading so you don't get exhausted. It's a very valuable tool. Um, we've been talking about that on past podcast episodes as well. It will make them better astrologers. But to, um, And I've studied a lot of different modalities. So metaphysically, esoterically, I do these things. And then I have the exoteric work, which is the physical realm. And when you put those together... You can live a pretty damn good life. Yeah. The last week isn't as bad as, as last one. This last one is much better. You're just Maybe you're feeling the residual energy of all the energy changes of last week. I'm feeling relief. But everybody's going to sense it differently. You know? I kind of felt like I was getting dragged by my hair all of last week. It was like, whoa. Thank you, Casey. Do I channel collective or a non-physical entity like Abraham? Well, Abraham is a collective. It's, it's infinite intelligence. And yes, I channel like that. Everybody can. So no, I don't channel the collective itself. I choose not to dip into that. I don't. When I write my horoscopes, I I dip into collective. But when I'm channeling these, it's 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 like Abraham. It's infinite intelligence. Is a good name for it. Source wisdom. Everybody can do it. Abraham says so too. I love going to Abraham things. I love feeling the energy ramp up in the room. I don't know if you've ever been to an Abraham event, but I go in and you can just feel it just, just not everyone. Some of them are different. The first one I went to, it was, you, you could feel it like viscerally. The second one I went to, but I was also not quite vibing with it. It was like, it was a weird time for me. I went to one of my birthdays. And, um, on my birthday, though, I got in. And it's funny. It was a last-minute decision. I didn't even know I'd be in L.A. for it. Because I actually had to go up and visit some relatives um, because someone had passed in our family. And so I didn't know if I'd even be back in time. But sure enough, I was back in time. And I was like, okay, I'm going to run into L.A., go to the hotel, and see if I can get a last-minute ticket. I got the last one. Happy birthday to me. 
But yeah, I've been working with that energy all of my life. Even before I ever knew about them. So they were a nice confirmation. So, but all of us can and all of us do. And that's our job to remind you. It's the time for the paradigm is over. The time for the chosen ones, it's over. We're moving into the need for group endeavor. Where like geese flying in formation, one leads, it gets tired, it falls back, the next takes its place. It gets tired, the next takes its place. It's a continual movement. The idea of hierarchy has been used to exhaust us all. What does it have to do with astrology? Everything. Everything. Because astrology reflects everything. And if you're a patron, guys, you get my guide to instinct and intuition where I explain some of this. And how to find your, you know, how your gifts might express in your own chart. You know, again, it's a general, anytime we write, it's going to be somewhat generalized. And it's not going to resonate with everybody's, you know, unique individual astrology. That's why we do readings, because that's the only way we can speak to a unique individual situation. But in general, if you're wanting to learn and satisfy your curiosity, that's there. Let me look at the comments here. They come flying in, right? Well, <clears throat> dial it back a little bit when it comes to divine purpose. Your divine purpose to, is to exist in a body on this planet and to understand that that alone is divine in nature. What brings you joy? What enlivens you? What makes you feel alive? It isn't about, I must lead the people. Yeah. There used to be this game called Zeus. I don't know if you guys remember. It was a strategy game. It was kind of like um, a Greek form of Age of Empires. And it'd be like, I am Aphrodite coming to rescue you. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's... it's we're not here for that. We're to have a range of experiences. And when we align into that, then we'll have a cool experience. Like, you know, TikTok. I didn't come on to TikTok to build an audience. I was doing really good. I actually, my business was doing just fine. My marketing was working. I was fine. I came on here to be a, a jerk and protest a president who wanted to ban an app and, or force a sale. Huh, 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 huh. Here we are again. <laughs> And I, I was like, oh my God, look at all these creative people. And then I found the astrology on here and I was like, oh, well, maybe I'll give some, you know, I've been talking mundane astrology. I'd been writing on my blog and, and then people found me. And all I wanted was a thousand people so I could go live and connect with other people. And then, and I, it was, it was aligned because I was having fun. It's why I'm not part of the creator fund. Um, I got asked to be in the creator fund. But I was like, you know, if I have to do this and worry about it, making it a job, I mean, it's not going to be fun anymore. I don't want to feel like I have to make content. Sometimes, some days I have more energy than others, you know, so I've been quiet lately. I too am going through transits, but I have my podcast and my Patreon and my clients and they're all be, being taken care of. I'll pick up that sun thing. I'll do it. But yeah. Yeah, the time of we, absolutely. Everything, um, oh good, Casey got that question, yeah. Well, I don't I don't think the retail banks are going to get hit. So unless you're an investor or, or involved in private equity, which your retirement may be, and there's not a lot you can do about that unless you have discretionary powers. Um, I've been telling people save cash. Not, and I'm not telling you to pull out your savings. Don't do that. Don't run a bank. Don't run on a bank. It hurts other people to do that. Um, you have to remember our retail banks are insured for up to $250,000 per account. 
okay? So, you know, most of us don't have that sitting in our bank. I don't have that sitting in my bank account, you know? So, I think there's something, uh, well, we're already in a banking crisis, Sweet Pea. Credit Suisse just got taken out. Credit Suisse just got taken over by UBS. I don't know if you guys know what that means, but that's huge. My first husband was, was a, a commercial banker, a merchant banker. He worked for a French bank called Indo Suez, and he worked for a bank called ABN Amro, which is now part of the AIM group. Uh, it's a big deal to have Credit Suisse go down. That's a huge deal. It was very political also. But um, retail banking, which is where you and I go credit unions, they should be fine. Um, I think we'll see commercial real estate fall apart in May. I think we'll see private equity firms fall apart in May. Um, not all the way. I don't think, we might see a smaller one go out of business, but, you know, Vanguard, BlackRock, they're, they're not going anywhere, you know, but they will get rocked hard. Um, the housing market will probably dip in some places more than others, but interest rates will continue. So I'm also concerned about food and food production, food supply due to weather, economics, transportation, politics. So these are things to pay attention to. But it's always good to have emergency cash on hand. I've, you know, once a week I go take a little bit out and I put it away. And I've had times where I've had to use it because, you know, I keep a little bit in my car too, just in case. And what, I don't know, about six months ago, I went to go put gas in my car and their card machine was down and they could only take cash. That's one of the reasons we keep it on us, you know. And how much should you keep? what you can, but don't pull it all out. But yeah. Um, to be honest, I don't think the old economic system is being quite replaced yet. I think that will be finalized during the Pluto and Taurus years, which is a 40 year transit long after I'm dead. Um, but we will see social restructuring. We'll see um, institutional restructuring. But I don't think we'll see currency restructuring um, until Pluto and Taurus. And that doesn't happen until what? Uh, it's like 31, the year 3125 or something like that. A long time after I'm gone. I probably won't even make it to Pluto in, in Aries, which starts in 2068. Um, I would be 99. I don't know that I want to go that long. It would be weird to live to the, the Pluto opposition of my Uranus Jupiter. That'd be a good way to go out. I'd be like a Roman candle. Um, where do people keep their money if not the bank? I'm not telling you not to keep money in the bank, honey. I'm saying to keep emergency cash. Retail banks and credit unions, I believe, will be fine. They've been ready for this. I have clients who work in the financial sector at high levels. I'm, I'm not feeling unsafe with my money in a retail bank. And if you're in a bigger credit union, you should be fine. Now, if you're with a small bank, a small regional bank, a small local bank, or an investment bank, then you might want to re reconsider and look at either, a, you know, if you don't like the big banks, look at a big credit union. Yeah. How bad will a food shortage get? You know, I talked about that in my year ahead seminar. I think it's going to hurt, obviously, developing nations far worse than it hurts the developed nations. But I think the developed nations are going to feel it too, especially in areas that are underserved in places with food deserts. Um, yeah, it's it's going to be something else. So... Um, prepare as best you can. There's some things we can't prepare for. 
you know. So um, it, it, it may be significant, I think, especially when it comes to grains and cereals. So if you like oatmeal, I'd stash away some oatmeal. If you like, I wouldn't hoard anything because first of all, that hurts your neighbor. Okay. Um, and by the way, the, the idea of the strongest survive, the fittest survive, that's a misapplication of Darwin's theories. And it's actually been bis disproven. The most adaptable survive, you know. So I have plenty of flour. And I have it sealed in airtight tubs. Um, canned goods, dried goods. Um, also, you want to keep buying um, things that, like rice is going to continue to be more and more expensive because the entire crop got lost last year in California. That And California provides most of America, like 80% of America's rice. Um, and that harvest got killed in the drought. And then again, we've been flooded. So... Um, that's going to be difficult. You want to do some indoor gardening this year. And I was really emphasizing that by the end of last year. And we hadn't had all the contaminations yet. That would be why. Um, you know, I've got a little um, hydroponic garden. I tell you, it is just taking off. I'm about to plant something else because my watercress is kind of bolting. It's not the best thing to grow a watercress in. But um, my cucumbers are getting huge. So I'm excited about that. Hey, Astro Kids. Yes, worried about, quote, yes, the extra COVID food stamps are gone. Yep. Yeah, so that's the other thing. If you buy a little extra, keep a food pantry in mind because they're already, they're already struggling. You know, people keep asking, are we going to go into a Great Depression? We're, we've been there for over a decade, my friends. We've been there. We've been there. We've been in a Great Depression since 2008. We never got out of it. It depended on your social class. We have far more homeless people now than we did in the Great Depression. And CEOs and C-level executives make an extraordinary... Um, the pay gap of the, between their earning level and the lowest paid worker in the company is several hundreds times higher than it was in the Great Depression. And it was like that in, in 2010 because my grandmother went to her grave despondent over it because she had fought and created, fought for the underdog, fought for those who needed the most support, created programs for people and watched it all be dismantled in her lifetime. And she was worried about it. She gave me the stats a couple months before she died and I tried to reassure her and I was like, hey, we're all social minded, all of your kids, all of your grandkids you do have a legacy. All your work hasn't been undone. It's pretty hard to watch your 90-some-year-old grandma just be so despondent. I'm really glad she didn't live to see 2016 because that would have taken her out. But, you know, each one of us makes up society and each one of us has a lot more agency than we think. We have to stop looking at how we can't, how we don't have power and look at the power we do have and where we can make an inroad. And voting is one thing. Running for office is another. And I'm not just talking about representatives and senators. I'm talking about your little water district, your, your, if you have a PUD, if you have a school board, um, don't just let the churches run everything, you know, and if you don't want to run, support the people who do. Support the people. You don't have to agree on everything, but agree on a couple of things, right? Support the people who do. Because the DNC will not support local candidates if they think a district is red. And I know that firsthand because I've helped people campaign in smaller districts that were known to go red. And the Dems would be like, no, nah, we can't fund you because you're going to lose. And I'd be like, who plans on losing? Why, why are you planning on losing here? So plan to win, you know, and plan to fight, you know, and I'm not talking about, I mean, unnecessary violence. I, I, I don't believe that's ever the way, but you can be um, disruptive, you know, and I have a great example of that. So like 
when I was in college in England, uh, one spring break, instead of coming to the States, because it was really expensive. Remember, I wasn't a rich kid. I was on scholarships. And um, I went to visit my grandma's dad's family in Norway, because we had distant cousins there. And so I, I got lucky, because one, and one of them had visited us already. And he was like, my dad's like, he was a cool guy. Anyway, so I went to stay with him and got to meet all this extended family. And he took me to the family farm where my great grandfather grew up, which was really cool. It's in Telemark. And so I got to go. And as we drove by this old building kind of complex, he was like, that's where they were making heavy water in World War II. And his dad had worked there as a young man. And the Germans thought they were stupid. And the, that that heavy water was going to be used to make an atom bomb. And because the Germans kept acting like the Norwegians were stupid, the Norwegians decided just to play stupid. And they would like unscrew stuff and take out washers. And they just sabotaged it with small acts of defiance. And they'd be like, where's the screws? And they'd be like, oh, I don't know nothing. And I was really proud of that. I was like, you know, there's like big, bold, brave moves, right? You know, rescuing people in the middle of the night and putting in fishing boats. And then there's the person who goes, fuck you, and takes out the screw. Man, we need a lot more of that. Take out the screws. Look at what the French are doing. They're turning off the power to people who have power. And I thought, my God, that's so French, you know. But... I hate to see things turn violent. I hope it doesn't get to that point. Because even though people are romanticizing the French Revolution, it hurt a lot of the average person. It didn't just take out the elite. It, it, it Neighbors turned on neighbors. It didn't solve the problem right away. And it's what caused Napoleon to come in. So um, just remember, those types of uprisings might feel good in the moment, but we need... And they're really more like rebellions. They're not really an evolutionary force. So we need to do things a little different and take power through an organized means and collective effort. And unions are cool, but make a workers co-op. You know, I'd love to see more women incorporate their bodies because corporations have more rights than we do. But if we're a corporation... We have rights. So can you force a corporation to not get medical treatment? What if you're a corporation and you have corporate insurance? Do they have to treat you? I'd love to see somebody challenge that in court. Oh, there you go. Your rent is reduced. There you go. Yeah. Yep. Victory Gardens and Canning, if you can. The F you person is you. I love that. Yeah. 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 And, you know, there's lots of ways to preserve. Not everybody's going to want to can. Not everybody can do it as well. It can be hard to do in a small space or an apartment. Um, but there's other things you can do. And, and do your best. You can dehydrate food. In fact, I don't know if you've ever dehydrated cantaloupe, but oh my God, it is ambrosia. It is ambrosia. It is like the sweetest candy you've ever had in your life. The 150 to, you know, to buy the shares. If they make them sell. Oh yeah, that would keep it from meta 100%. 100%. Well, you know, it's funny. In 2020, in the fall of 2020, before I got here, before I even came on to TikTok, um, I was... I'm looking, I was already not happy with, like, I'd never liked anything Meta owned. Couldn't stand Zuck. I only ended up there because I had a niece who invited me to look at it back in 2007 or 8 or something like that. And then I ended up teaching for an online school that had some Facebook groups. And so I ended up being on there for a while. But off and on because it's to me it's like the AOL of the internet it's like lame I know a lot of you have fond memories of AOL but I'm a geek <laughs> so AOL was not a fun place for a geek um anyway um like I like my internet nice wide and open without restrictions can we not like anytime anybody's trying to protect you from yourself yeah no 
It's never a good thing. Yeah. But what if kids find it? Well, maybe we should like turn off things and yeah, you should be able to have parental controls a hundred percent. We can tell our children no as well. It's not a violent thing to do to say, no, you can't be on the screen right now. You've had your time. Now it's time to do this. Pardon me, but that's parenting. And oh no, they might cry because you said no. Oops. Well, and if that's their biggest trauma, thank God for that. Just saying. So, yeah. Yeah. Right? Helicopter parent crap. Yeah. Now, see, it's funny. People were helicopter parents when I was parenting my kids. And I got so many nasty side eyes for raising my kids the way I did. Because I'd be like, you have hands and feet. You can do stuff. Look at you. You're tall enough to reach the buttons on the washing machine. Cool. You're going to be washing your clothes and the five million towels you just used to clean up chocolate milk. I wash the important things and the delicates and, you know, that kind of thing. The, I did that mom stuff, but, you know, like, you want to do something? Go find out how much. Now, as teenagers, this was not small children. This was not five-year-olds. And it was funny when my, and my kids were a little annoyed with it when they were teenagers because I didn't overdo like other people did for their kids. But when they got out in the world, they were like, oh, my God, people have not been raised. What the hell? I'm like, mm -hmm, I know. <laughs> I was witnessing that. But yeah, no, it is it is very abusive and very controlling behavior. And, and so you want to know why they don't make anti-domestic violence laws stronger. Um, well, look at their attitudes. Look at what they say. They, they're they saying the same damn things. So we can be mad at them or we can elect each other. It's not enough to vote because then you're just going to get stuck with, well, this devil's not as bad as that devil. Run for office. I'll support you. I found so many different candidates in different states that, hey, at least I could donate 10 bucks or just share their content, you know? Look at how AOC got elected. She was able to crowdsource and fund. She used the internet. She did an amazing thing. We need more of that. That's what Bernie was saying. When Bernie said he couldn't do it without people's help, he wasn't talking about becoming president. He was talking about people being actively involved. You do have time. You do have skills. There's something you can do. Everybody has something they can do. Hell, you could be the listening ear for the candidate. Like maybe you're really good at keeping your mouth shut and being a shoulder. Because you know what? It's really stressful to do that stuff because you get attacked all the time. So having somebody to talk to, you know, that's a service. Everybody wants this grandiose thing. And when we learn to listen, we hear each other's heartbeats. Right? Right? Well, yeah, it does start when they're kids, of course. Yeah, that's why you have a little food cupboard for the toddlers to be able to get in with their little snacks. And the apples. Actually, oh my God, when my son, who is a cook now, by the way, an amazing cook, Taurus Rising, Gemini. Five planets in Gemini. He was about four. I know he wasn't five yet. And... I had been busy in another room and I went to go into the kitchen to go make lunch. And there he was standing on the step stool with a big butcher knife and a block of cheddar cheese, the Tillamook bricks. I couldn't say a word because if I startled him, there would go the knife. And we had a rule. He couldn't use daddy knives. The big ones were daddy knives. The medium sized were mommy knives. And then there were the little baby knives. And I had a pampered chef knife for kids so it wouldn't cut their fingers off. But I couldn't say a word. And there he is standing there. 
I waited for him to finish. I was holding my breath in my head. I'm envisioning his fingers all over the counter, right? And he turned around and he got startled, but he put the knife down, you know, and, and, and he startled it. And, um, and I said, why are you using a daddy knife? And he said, mom, I've been doing it for years. Oh my God. And I was like, what are the rules? <laughs> Grab the pampered chef. This one I showed him. Mommy will use this. See, this cuts just fine. Please use this one because this one can take off your fingers. But mom, I've been doing it for years. He was four. And I was like, what does years mean? Months, weeks, since he was two. I know he didn't do it since he was two. And he's a cook now. And so I would let him safely cut up things and food prep with me because I was afraid of him doing it on his own. So sometimes we do have to let them do things. But oh my God, that child, hurt in my throat. And he was a really good kid. You know, he really was. He didn't make a mess. He wasn't, he was just gonna do it because he wanted some cheese. And you know, he could have just taken the block of cheese and chewed all over it. So... I'm going to say that was some pretty good moves for a four-year-old. But yeah, he's on TikTok. I try not to talk about him too much. I, I try to respect my kids' privacies, but they've got some of those old stories are pretty cute. But now he's a big grown man with a beard. So it's really weird when they get big. But... Uh, Oh my goodness, it's late. I will get this one up on, on Patreon. I worry about over posting on there because I already send you guys so much and I'm afraid it goes to spam because I, you know, I post so much. So, but yeah, but yeah. Now he only uses daddy knife. Actually, he has a couple baby knives for doing, you know, easy work. But yeah, right. Your teenagers are Gemini and Aquarius rising. <laughs> she laughs knowingly. <laughs> yeah, I'm really glad he had a Taurus rising because he has five planets in Gemini. All of his personal planets are in Gemini. I did not sit down until he was five. I was ready for Christmas in August, like entirely ready for Christmas in August, the year he turned five. And I realized what it was. He had slowed down and could sit and watch a cartoon. I hadn't noticed that. And I kept running as fast as I had to keep up with him. Yeah. And then when he wanted to sleep in as a teenager, I used to wake him up early in the morning by bouncing on his bed going, Good morning, good morning, good morning. And my like, mom, don't do that. I'm like, Mwah. oh no, child. Right. All right. I'll get this one up on Patreon because I like this podcast or not this podcast, this episode. If you do, if you haven't listened to my podcast before, if you're new, I'm Lori. I've been an astrologer for three decades. I'm a spiritual teacher and mentor. Um, everything is astrology. Um, astrology is in everything. Uh, my goal is to empower and inspire you to take your aspirations out in the world and live your very best life that you can in any given moment. If you're not a patron, you can check out the link in my bio. It'll show you everything. If you are a patron, you know where to find stuff. All right. Take care, guys.